grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and good morning. My name is Greg, and I'm one of the pastors here at First Presbyterian Church in Red Wing, and it is my joy to welcome you for worship on this Sunday, August the 16th, 2020. Um, we hope that you were able to see all of our announcements uh, for our meetings and our events and uh, things going on in the church during the prelude. Um, if you did not see them, we invite you to... Um, Rewind and watch it again or when the service is over to go back and look uh, and look and see what you might have missed um, One thing uh, to highlight is this month. We are um, Talking about the book blind spot hidden biases of good people um, We will be preaching sermons inspired by this work and we also be meeting on Tuesdays uh, Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. in Central Park and Tuesday um, evenings at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, the best way to find out about all that is going on here at First Presbyterian Church in Red Wing is to sign up for our newsletter. If you go to our website, firstpresbyterianredwing.com, uh, there is a sign-up page, uh, a form, and also uh, there should be a box that pops up, um, and just fill out your email address and you will be get all the most updated information, our, our weekly happenings, as well as our uh, monthly newsletter, uh, which we send out uh, primarily by email. One other thing I wanted to highlight is um, the being blessed by uh, the folks who have been you, who have been generous uh, and continued givers to our ministry that have supported our ministry. A fantastic way to do that is to sign up for a regular payment uh, online giving on our website. Uh, there's a Give Now button on our homepage and also on uh, just above this video on our website. And there's also um, opportunity uh, to uh, go to www.bit.ly slash FPCRW donate. I know that's a lot. I'll be put that up on the screen here so that you can see. But bit.ly slash FPCR donate will give you, a, will allow you to support our ministry as we are um, together while apart. Let us join together this morning. Let us take a deep breath and let us worship God. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. We are called to be people of faith in the midst of the world. And so we mix our worship and our work, our faith and our life. We gather here while apart as people who live in the world and yet. We gather as people who have been called to see the world from a different viewpoint. God has called us together. God has called us to be part of a community. God challenges us to consider questions of priority as we engage with the world. In this time together, may God open our hearts, minds, and eyes, allowing us to see deeper helping us to live in the world while still offering a challenge to the ways of the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Join with us now as we confess our sins to God and to one another. Creator God, we come to you realizing that we do not see everything that is in front of us. We have blind spots that keep us from seeing all of your creation as beloved. We often refuse to acknowledge our blindness when it is pointed out to us. Help us to remember that it is you that sees and we are in need of the spirit to see more clearly. Give us the patience to listen to those who see things we cannot or refuse to see. 
give us strength to acknowledge our need for others and for your grace. Amen. Jesus is gentle with our doubts. The Spirit offers us peace in the midst of our lack of understanding. The one who created us leads us step by step into deeper trust. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning. I am Pastor Heidi Bolt, one of the co-pastors here at First Presbyterian Church in Red Wing, Minnesota. We have two scriptures this morning. The first from the Old Testament. This is 1 Samuel 16, verses 1 through 13. This is the story of the transition from King Saul to the cho choosing of King David. Let us listen together for the word of the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. 
and he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chose any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and he had beautiful eyes, and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. This is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence the compassionate in cheerfulness. Thanks be to God for the gift of this word. The other night, the kids and I watched a Disney musical together. It was fun and lighthearted, and as in many of these stories, the prince got the girl in the end. But when the movie was over, I asked my daughter, what did the prince fall in love with? Was it anything more than that the girl was pretty and had really good hair? Did we see any evidence that he was in love with the person and not the appearance? In our Old Testament scripture today, it seems that Israel had fallen for a strong, good-looking guy in King Saul. And now God is telling the prophet Samuel that a new king has been chosen. And this time, the choice will not be based on outside appearance. Beginning in Genesis with Hagar, a recurring name for God is El Roy, the God who sees. And sight is a theme in our passage today. One translation for the second half of verse 1 is, I have seen me a king among the sons of Jesse. 
the prophet Samuel, who has been so faithful throughout the story recounted in 1 Samuel, is tricked by his own sight, thinking that the oldest son, Aliab, must be the chosen king. Even Samuel the prophet has not seen as God sees, reminding us that there are human limitations to our ability to see as God sees. The God who sees says this to Samuel. The Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Eventually, after going through seven sons, God chooses one who Samuel has not yet even seen, David. And even after we have been told that God looks on the heart, the narrator of the story can't help but tell us that David is ruddy with beautiful eyes and so handsome. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. The heart in ancient Israel is the center of one's being. It is where emotion, intelligence, discernment, wisdom, commitment, and character reside. That is what God, who's the God who sees really sees into our very souls, who we really are. People tend to judge by outward appearance. God does not see as mortals see. This story is a reminder that if we cannot trust the eyes of a prophet like Samuel or the vision of King David, said to be a man after God's own heart, that we must practice a certain wariness of anyone who claims to know God's mind. In the end, it is those who can own and confess their own blindness, their own inability to see as God sees, who through God's grace might be able to say, I was blind, but now I see. We serve the God who sees, and we know that we don't see as God sees, and we need to come to our own limited sight with humility. How fitting that as a church we are this August reading the book Blind Spot, The Hidden Biases of Good People. The book details all of the ways that our minds contain blind spots, places where we hold thoughts we don't even know we hold. In chapters 4 through 6, the book talks about stereotypes, the image we get in our head about a certain type of person before we even know anything about them. This could be a stereotype, like in 1 Samuel, that what makes a good king is someone who is handsome or strong or tall. Or it could be a more contemporary stereotype about things like which gender is better at math or what a typical American looks like. Human beings tend to base our assumptions on outward appearances. And while this is normal and helpful for our survival to create categories to help us sort information, it can also be destructive. Stereotypes are often negative, and stereotypes have real consequences. In the book, Blind Spot, the authors write, stereotypes, especially automatic stereotypes, don't just engage the neurons in our heads and the thoughts in our minds and remain there. They have impact on behavior, such as the intellectual pursuits we select, a decision that in turn may influence what career path we chart for ourselves, the happiness we derive from it, and the contributions we make by the end of our lives. Our stereotypes impact our behavior. The Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. How do we remove our blind spots? How do we get better at looking on the heart like the God who sees does? I think Paul's letter to the Romans has some clues for us. He says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, 
to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what the will of God is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We cannot be conformed to this world. If the world asks us to stereotype, we need to be transformed to see every person as God sees them. If the world tells us that some people are more valuable than others, we need to be transformed so that we can see all as beloved. Our minds must be renewed. When we encounter blind spots in ourselves, we must examine and change them. This will take both the grace of God, which is always available to us, and our own initiative to do the hard work of facing all of the ways that we don't see as God sees. We ultimately will be transformed, not just because it makes us better humans, but so that we might discern what the will of God is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. We are transformed so that we might live oriented to God's future, a future when we do see as God sees, when we do look at the heart to the character of a person, when we do allow each person to participate fully in community, sharing their gifts for the good of the whole. Martin Luther King Jr. puts it this way, Human progress never rolls in on wheels of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts of people willing to be co-workers with God. And without their hard work, time itself becomes an ally of the forces of social stagnation. We must use time creatively in the knowledge that the time is always ripe to do right. The time is ripe to look at our blind spots. The time is ripe to consider what our true spiritual worship really is when everything we have thought it has been has been taken away from us. Paul says spiritual worship is bodily worship. The time is ripe to consider what implications there might be for our very bodies as we live out our discipleship to God. What we do day to day in our lives that expresses God's will, that is our spiritual worship. One's whole life, body and mind, becomes an expression of our devotion to God. The God who sees more than outward appearance. The God who sees beyond stereotype. Because we are all members of one body. When we are each transformed by the renewing of our minds, we become the transformed community. And we recognize that we need each other, each and every single one of each other, all sharing their gifts for the building up of the kingdom of God. I exhort you, followers of Jesus, look at your blind spots. Work on the places where stereotypes impact your treatment of God's beloved children. The time is ripe to do right. The time is ripe to be a co-worker with God so that your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life can be an offering to God, the God who sees our hearts and loves us all. May it be so. And amen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine, hallelujah. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, hallelujah. This little light of mine, this little light of mine, 
I am gonna let it shine. Hallelujah, children, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Let it shine. Shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine. Hallelujah! 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 This little light of mine. Hallelujah. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Hallelujah, children. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Let it shine. Sing it, children. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine all the time, all the time. Let it shine, let it shine. Let us affirm our faith with an excerpt from the Confession of Belhar from the Presbyterian USA Book of Confessions. We believe in one holy universal church, the communion of saints called from the entire family, human family. We believe that Christ's work of reconciliation is made manifest in the church as the community of believers who have been reconciled with God and with one another. We believe that unity is therefore both a gift and an obligation for the church of Jesus Christ. That through the working of God's spirit, it is a binding force. Yet simultaneously, a reality in which we must be, earn must be earnestly pursued and sought one which the people of God must continually be built up to attain. There we, therefore, we reject any doctrine which professes that this spiritual unity is truly being maintained in the bond of peace, while believers of the same confession are in effect alienated from one another for the sake of diversity and despair of reconciliation. Amen. Now is the time in our worship where we gather together the prayers of the people. If you have a prayer request, you are invited to text that prayer request to 651-327-0779. That number goes to both of the pastors, or you may also email at email the church at office at firstpresbyterianredwing.com or at Pastor Greg or Pastor Heidi at firstpresbyterianredwing.com. And those prayers will be lifted up and passed on to our prayer chain. This morning, we would like to lift up prayers for Darlene, 
whose grandson was tragically killed in a car accident. We also lift up uh, and offer prayers of peace and comfort to all of the teachers and administrators and students and parents um, of students of all ages and teachers and administrators of all levels as they seek to do school in a new way, in a different way, and all of the anxiety and unknown that comes with that, um, may we all re realize that we are all in this together. And let us remain faithful and resolute, knowing that God is with us no matter what. Let us pray. Holy One, you anoint us with living water, so we may go to serve the world in these troubled days. You open our eyes so we will see everyone as human, everyone as children of God. Seed planter, you place faith deep within us so we can bear witness to your just and loving kingdom. Your love regulates our hearts so we can welcome all in your name. Gentle Spirit, when we cannot see the way, you take us by the hand so we can step forward in faith into the kingdom. You fill us with hope so we can sing God's joy all of our days. God in community, holy in one, hear us as we pray as your son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we go out into the world in yet another week of uh, blah, 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 okay. Charge and benediction. As we go out into this week, know that the time is ripe to examine the blind spots in your own mind. Know that the time is ripe that we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That our going out and our coming in, our day-to-day -day lives, can be our offering to God. And that can be our worship. Know that God sees your heart and loves you and offers you grace and the ability to change. And as you go into the world, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And may God give you the grace not to sell yourself short. May God give you the grace to risk something big for the sake of something good. May God give you the grace to know that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. May God take your minds and think through them. May God take your mouths and speak through them. May God take your hands and work through them. May God take your heart and set it on fire. Amen.